Okay, I want to do a study today, the very first part of this study. It's going to be a very big, very detailed study that we need to look at. And this is entitled Independent Fundamental Baptist Catholicism. Oh boy. Uh, right off the bat, I'm sure I'm offending people by my title. And uh, this first part, by the way, is going to be on the history of the Baptist movement as well as church buildings. Where did this thing of the Baptist church building come from? But uh, I just want to do kind of an introduction to this study before we get into it and uh, explain what my purpose is in this thing. Uh, for many, many years, I have gone to independent fundamental Baptist churches. I've gone and I've been part of this movement now for a long time. Um, I'm not some kind of a, an outsider that's speaking in and I've never visited or don't know anything about them or anything like that. I mean, you can look at my channel. There are sermons times that I've preached at IFB church buildings and I've preached there. Okay, I've preached in numerous ones. Um, so I'm not an enemy. Okay, I need to explain that because some of the brethren are going to probably take this as an attack. Uh, this isn't an attack. This is a reproof, a rebuke, and exhortation. All right, there's a lot of things that I've been finding over the years, a lot of inconsistencies with the Bible. And, you know, the, in, the IFB system prides themselves on the thing of being, you know, we follow the King James Bible in all matters of faith and doctrine and practice. Um, I'm here to tell you that's not true. And I've seen these inconsistencies, and, and, you know, a lot of the brethren do too. And what they do is they actually choose to cover up these inconsistencies and actually choose to change the facts of history. And this study is going to set those facts straight. Not because I'm trying to destroy the IFB system. Not at all. Um, I'm just trying to say God cannot bless the system when you are not truly lining up with the Bible and when you are actually lining up with Catholicism. And see, there's another big teaching that the IFB system is not part of the Protestant Reformation. And that's true and false which we're going to see as we go through this study. Doctrinally, some of the doctrines of, of the independent fundamental Baptists, like believer's baptism, I mean, that's, that's really the whole issue here with Protestant and Catholic versus Baptist, because most Protestant denominations like the Lutherans or the uh, um, Methodists or uh, Presbyterians, I think even, most of those will baptize infants, which is absurd. Uh, why are you baptizing somebody that has no say in the matter? You say, well, do you, to get rid of the stain of original sin. Oh, yeah, come on. That's ridiculous. Okay, baptismal regeneration is not a Bible doctrine. And Catholicism also teaches this. So you have these Protestant denominations that have come out of Catholicism, but yet they hold on to the baggage of baptismal regeneration. And you say, well, that, that, the independent fundamental Baptists aren't that way. Well, that's correct. I don't know of one independent fundamental Baptist church building that baptizes infants. There might be one nowadays, you know, there's everything out there, every kind of heresy that you can imagine. But for the most part, IFB, the whole IFB denomination, they do not baptize infants. And But see, the faulty notion is that because there were believers in the past that were not part of the Protestant system and they baptized adults, then they were Baptists in the modern day sense of the word. And I'm going to show you that that's not true. And in fact, what is called independent fundamental Baptist today is actually Protestant. They do carry over much of the baggage from the Roman Catholic system and bring it into their practice. Their regular worship services, their regular attendance to buildings, all those things actually come from Catholicism. So to say that the modern day Baptist church is not Protestant, that's not accurate. And I'm going to show you some very, very shocking facts today about the history, the origin of the modern day church building. And I'm going to show you that if you are in that system, and here we go, I'm going to make some real friends with this, but if you're in that system, God can't use you. God cannot fully use people that are in these buildings. I'm going to prove it to you today. 
and you say, well, I'm not going to watch this video. This is preposterous. This is absurd. Okay, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13 says, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Now, if you are an independent fundamental Baptist, and you say that you line up with the King James Bible in all matters of faith and practice, then you better watch this video, and you better answer me from the Bible. I don't care about your feelings. I really don't. I don't care if you can talk about the great traditions and the old-time religion and stuff. And by the way, that old-time religion stuff, old-time religion, if you want to talk about the modern IFB system, goes back about 300 years. And I doubt that the people that called themselves Baptists back then, I doubt that they were doing the things that happened in the modern-day IFB church buildings. So your old-time religion is only a few hundred years old. Again, we'll get into this in this study. And this is going to be a long study. This is not going to be a quick little 30-minute study or something. This is going to be multi-part. Uh, this is just part one of the teaching. There's 27 pages here. It's going to be available as a PDF. I have the link down in the description box there. Um, this is going to be a multi-part study. Okay, this is not some kind of a quick little milky message. Um, this is a very serious thing that I'm talking about right now. And as a result, I'm going to have to provide a lot of documentation. Because a lot of the brethren just are not going to like what I'm having to say right now. And they're going to say, oh, you can't prove it. I'm going to prove it in the study. Now, let's begin. Having begun that way, let's, let's get started here. Actually, why don't we pray before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would help me to, to do this study in the right spirit, Lord. And I pray for the people out there that are watching and listening to this. That you would open up their minds, Lord, and that they would search the scriptures, that they would think about what does the Bible really teach, and that they would not be caught up in the doctrines and traditions of men, but that they would stay focused and centered on your word, Lord, the King James Bible. And uh, Lord, I, I realize that there are a lot of uh, Baptists out there that are saved. Some aren't, but a lot are. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come into their heart and convict them and show them if I'm telling them the truth or not. And I just ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Is it possible that independent fundamental Baptists have elevated unscriptural traditions above the King James Bible? Yeah, it is. Matthew chapter 15. If you want to turn there in your Bible, Matthew 15, verses 1 through 9. Now, I have the scriptures typed out here for this PDF, and so I'm just going to be reading them. I'm not going to be turning in my Bible unless I have another scripture that I think of that I need to turn to. But I'm just going to be going through this thing quick because there's so much information to cover. Matthew 15, verse 1 says, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do, th why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of that in the independent fundamental Baptist system. And like I said, I have, I have gone to numerous ones. And I'm not talking I visited for three Sundays and then I left. I'm talking years, okay? going to places and being there for a year, two years, three years, getting to know the pastor, getting to talk to him, being involved with the ministry there, preaching. I'm not a newcomer to the system, okay? I've been in that system for a long time. So what you have to understand is, you know, there are some very serious problems. And, you know, like I said, God can't fully bless somebody that's at one of these places. And what you're going to see is, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but I just want to say this. What you're going to see is God is going to put an end to this system. 
I believe as the church age is drawing to a close, I believe it's going to go right back to the first century, to the way things were done in the first century. All right? This young system uh, of independent fundamental Baptist, this movement, and meeting in church buildings, this thing's only a few hundred years old. And there's some very, very, very wicked ties to this whole system. Some things I was, I was shocked, to be quite frank with you. I was shocked to find some of these things. Um, my wife and I have been doing the research now for probably about a month, I would imagine. And um, the Lord has shown us both some things that are just, wow, really bad. So what is the history of Baptist church buildings? Well, we're going to look here at an article by Dr. Vernon C. Lyons. And you can see I have the link right there in the PDF. If you want to look at the PDF, it's right there. He says here, quote, People are usually put in one of three religious groups. If you are not a Jew or a Roman Catholic, then automatically you are a Protestant. Consequently, Baptists are usually called Protestants. However, this does not match the facts. Baptists never have been Protestants. Okay? We'll see about that. And like I said earlier, that statement, Baptists have never been Protestants, well, that might have been true for the early 17th century Baptist groups, but it's not true for today. Modern-day Baptists do practice much of Catholicism with their building services. They do. Quote, back to the article here. Protestants date from the 16th century. They are the Lutherans, the Reformed, and others who were once Roman Catholics and left the Roman Catholic faith to start denominations of their own. The Baptists never left the Roman Catholic Church as did Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli. They never left because they were never in. They did not begin their existence at the time of the Reformation, but hundreds of years prior to the Reformation. And again, this is not entirely true. We will see that many early Baptist leaders were formerly Anglican, which is just another branch of Catholicism. Okay, And in fact, a lot of these early guys weren't even Baptists. They never called themselves Baptists. They taught, you know, that you should baptize adults, but they never called themselves Baptists. Now, who's, who are probably the two biggest names in Baptist history? Well, you have Roger Williams in America, and you have John Smith, spelled S-M-Y-T-H. John Smith in England, Roger Williams in America. And you can go to Wikipedia there about Roger Williams, there's the link, and it says, quote, Although he took holy orders in the Church of England, he had become a Puritan at Cambridge, forfeiting any chance of a place of preferment in the Anglican Church. So Roger Williams did come out of the Church of England. The Church of England was set up under King Henry VIII because he wanted to divorce his one wife, and the Pope wouldn't let him, so he said, okay, fine, I'll make my own branch of Catholicism which is the Anglican Church, the Church of England, called in America the Episcopalian Church. All right, so Roger Williams came out of that system. So technically, you know, he wasn't a, you know, the Protestant reformers like Luther, he wanted to reform the Catholic Church. Um, John Wesley was also Church of England before he got saved, and he got out of that system and created the Methodist Church. So a lot of those guys were part of that system. And what they did a lot of times when they started their own group, their own denomination, they took a lot of the baggage from Catholicism and brought it right over into their system. A lot of the traditions of men that have no basis in Scripture, they brought it right over. And I'm going to show you that while Roger Williams was from the Church of England, he actually didn't take anything with him. Now, if he was truly part of Baptist history, then you could probably make that claim. But I'm going to show you, Roger Williams didn't call himself a Baptist, and in fact, he did things very similar to what we're doing right now. He uh, tried preaching in the church buildings of his day, and he was always, you know, said that, you know, he was making sedition and, and all kinds, preaching heresy and everything, and uh, they kicked him from church building to church building, and finally they, they you know, excommunicated him in America, and he went to the Indians, and, I mean, you can study all this stuff, but I'm just giving you a quick little synopsis. He went to the Indians and bought some land up in Rhode Island, here in America, and he called 
the little town there, the little city, he called it Providence, you know, because it was God's providence that led them there, you know. And he even named his one daughter Providence. And so that's where this first Baptist church in America began. But Roger Williams never called himself a Baptist. And you're going to be very interested to find out about the history of this first Baptist church building in America. It's very interesting. But let's continue here. Next we have Wikipedia on John Smith. There again is, you have the link. Quote, Smith was ordained as an Anglican priest in 1594 in England. Soon after his ordination, he broke with the Church of England and left for Holland where he and his small congregation began to study the Bible ardently. He briefly returned to England. Okay, so from this we can see that two of the biggest names from Baptist history were in fact former Anglicans. Now the question comes up, did either of these two men bring along any Anglican slash Catholic baggage when they left their system? And of course, like I said, we're going to see this as we continue in this study. Now back to the article by Dr. Vernon C. Lyons. Quote, Doctrinally, Baptists are not Protestants. The viewpoint that Baptists share common doctrinal ground with Protestant groups is not an accurate reporting of the facts. There are six striking differences between Protestant groups and Baptists. Number one, Baptists believe with all their heart that God's word alone is sufficient for faith and practice. Oh boy, that's not true. That is not the truth. A lot of Baptist practice lines up with the Catholic Catechism and not with the King James Bible. It's not in here. A lot of the practice of the independent fundamental Baptists has no basis in Scripture. So that's a lie. Continuing here, he says, quote, We read, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. 2 Timothy 3.16 Various Protestant denominations have creeds, catechisms, and assorted doctrinal stands. Baptists hold to the Bible alone. Absolute lie. Total lie. The Catholic Catechism has many things in it, teachings and things in the and and you know church practices that the Baptists are doing the same thing. And you look through the Bible, the King James Bible, it's nowhere in there. Now, is it just a coincidence that the Baptists and the Catholics are doing the same thing? I mean, is it just coincidental that that you know the Catholics have their catechism and with, with all their unscriptural practices? And somehow, magically, the Baptists came up with the same thing apart from the Catechism? No. What's going on? The Baptist system did, in fact, come from the Protestant system. The modern, independent, fundamental Baptist system, many of the church practices, and I'm not talking about doctrine, okay? Bible doctrine-wise, baptizing adults, no, that didn't come from Catholicism. That's a Bible doctrine. Sure. Justification, justification by faith alone in the finished work of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 there. No, that's not Catholic. That's Bible doctrine. But I'm talking about practice. All right? It comes from Catholicism. So point number one there is not true. Baptists do not hold to the Bible alone. That is not true. Number two, Baptists believe that Christ and only Christ is the head of the church, even as the scripture says, Christ is the head of the church, Ephesians 5.23. There is no man who has the oversight of Baptist churches. Again, another lie. Another total lie. First of all, most Baptist churches are mortgaged to the bank. You know, so you have the bank that basically tells the Baptist church what to do. But secondly, many Baptist churches in this country are under... IRS code section 501c3, which is the tax-exempt status. And in that code, you can watch my um, How to Start a House Church on the King, based on the King James Bible. You can watch those videos. In that IRS code, Baptist pastors are not allowed to say anything that will affect public policy, and they're not allowed to talk about who to vote for in a political election. And I know that used to always bother me, because I'd be in these Baptist churches, you know, in my years past, and I'd it'd get around election time and, and the, the Baptist pastor would stand up and he'd say, now, I'm not allowed to tell you who to vote for. And I thought, you're not allowed to tell me something? What in the world's going on? Did Jesus Christ say you're not allowed to talk about politics? No. Well, then who is saying you're not allowed to talk, tell me? And why are you submitting to him? 
because they're government churches. They are creatures of the state. They are not creatures of Jesus Christ, extensions of the body of Christ. They are extensions of the secular government. And that's going to be very important as we continue here. Okay, let's continue. Number two there, quote, Baptists have no denomination in the sense of an organization that controls local congregations. Each local, con each local church is autonomous and accountable only to Christ. Not true. Who is its head? A Baptist church, while following fellowshipping, or I'm sorry, while fellowshipping with congregations of like faith and practice, has no earthly headquarters. Its headquarters is in heaven. And again, that's even that's not true many times because a lot of times you have these Baptist churches, which are sister churches of this one and sister churches of that one, and you know they are kind of accountable to each other. So that's not even really all that true. Number three. Baptists believe from their hearts in a free church and in a free state. Christ plainly taught that the state and the church each had its own realm when he said, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. Matthew 22, verse 21. Now look at this. Baptists are vigorously opposed to union of state and church and believe that a state-controlled church is a wretched excuse for Christianity and a plain departure from Scripture. All of the Protestant reformers fasten state churches upon their followers. Boom! There goes probably over half of the Baptist, independent fundamental Baptist churches in America. By that one statement alone, statement number three, he just went wham and just wiped them all out. Disqualified them. You're not legitimate. Boom! You are a uh, wretched excuse for Christianity. His words, not mine. Right there. Sorry. And then number four there talks about Baptists believe strongly in individual accountability to God because the scriptures clearly teach that every one of us shall give account of himself to God, Romans 14, 12. A priest cannot answer for you. A church cannot answer for you to God. God parents cannot answer for you. No one is saved because of what his parents believe. No one is saved because of his identification with any religion. He will account for himself to God. Protestants generally do not hold this scriptural doctrine. And of course... There's some truth to that. I mean, you know, Baptists do teach individual salvation, at least the ones I've been around. Although some of them kind of, I think, get a little bit, you know, arrogant and cocky with the thing of being an independent fundamental Baptist, you know. And they kind of start to think that they're the only ones that are saved. And uh, there's some issues there, too. But uh, number five, Baptist people, furthermore, have always held to believers' baptism. None of the Protestant reformers held this biblical teach or this Bible teaching. In the Scriptures, faith and repentance always preceded baptism. On the day of Pentecost, Peter plainly told the people, "Repent and be baptized." Acts two thirty-eight. This obviously means that there is no infant baptism, since infants are incapable of repenting. No unbelievers are to be baptized. The reformers followed Rome in their teaching on baptism. Baptists have held steadfastly to the doctrine of Christ and his apostles on this point. Now that one I would agree with. Like I said, I've never met an independent fundamental Baptist that believed in baptizing babies. Every IFB Baptist I've ever met, they all believe in believer's baptism. Okay? So, no problem there. Number six, Baptists on the basis of Scripture have always held to a regenerate church membership. Mm-hmm. That is a membership that is made up only of people who give a credible profession of faith in Christ. In the apostolic church, only those who became believers, those who received the word of God, and who had repented of their sins were baptized and received as church members. There was no automatic or formalistic membership in apostolic churches, nor in Baptist churches today. Um, again, that's very shaky right there. You know, formalistic membership, you know, that there's none of that in independent fundamental Baptist churches. Ugh. I've seen some that there is. I've seen some that you have to become an official member, and if you're, you know, if you're not, if you don't come for two or three weeks in, in a row, then you're automatically no longer a member, and if you come back, then you have to go through the membership process again. And how about the thing of regenerate church membership? <laughs> I've seen a lot of Baptists, you know, independent fundamental Baptists that are just as lost as you could be. Uh, I don't believe, you know, that's real accurate either. But uh, 
As I stated, number one, modern Baptist churches are doing many things which have no basis in Scripture. We'll talk about that as we continue. Number two, many IFB practices are straight out of the Catholic Catechism and not found in the King James Bible. Number three, points two and three are directly contradicted by IFB churches who are under 501c3 incorporation. Number four, I have been to many different IFB churches and I can assure you that they are not made up entirely of a, quote, regenerate church membership. Very true. Back to the article, quote, Baptists have never been linked with Protestants and have never been identified with the Roman Catholic Church. Through the years before and after the Reformation, they have maintained their identity and been faithful to the Scriptures. Real Baptists hold to the plain teaching of Christ and the Apostles. No, they don't. No, they absolutely do not. Many of the practices with the IFB system have no basis in Scripture. I keep saying that, and we're going to continue, and we're going to prove it. Quote, Baptists are not Protestants, but hold tenaciously to the original precepts and practices of Christ and the Apostles. Baptists believe the pure word of God to be sufficient authority on all matters. Baptists reject all human religious traditions and practices that have originated since the time of the Apostles. Now, brethren, that is a straight-out lie. Dr. Vernon C. Lyons, you need to be ashamed of yourself. You are a liar. That is not true right there. Reject all human religious tra traditions and practices that have originated since the time of the apostles. Oh, come on. Come on. I mean, give me a break. I'm going to prove it to you. Number one, you want to talk about religious traditions and practices that have originated since the time of the apostles? Number one, there are no buildings called churches in the New Testament. Not one. Prove me wrong. Number two, there are no altar calls. You never see that. Number three, there are no Sunday schools. There aren't. Number four, there are no choirs in the New Testament. No choirs and no special music. Number five, there are no revival meetings. Where are the revival meetings at in the New Testament? They're not there. Number six, there are no Wednesday evening prayer meetings. Number seven, there are no social events. You know, Valentine's dinner, you know, stuff like that. Number eight, there are no Bible universities. Where do you see any Christian anywhere in the New Testament setting up a Bible institute or a Bible university or a Bible college or seminaries? Where's this stuff at? Number nine, get ready, here it comes. There are no special outfits for worship. Oh, brother, I believe you should wear your Sunday best, okay? Chapter and verse. You say, oh, you're saying all this stuff is a sin and it's all going to send you to hell. Don't put words into my mouth, okay? I didn't say that this stuff will send you to hell. I said these practices have no basis in Scripture. All right? No basis in Scripture at all. They are religious traditions that have been formed since the writing of the Bible. So to say, as IFB churches, we reject any man-made tradition. That's a lie. That is a total lie. Continuing on. Next we're going to go to an article here. It's called A Brief Survey of Independent Fundamental Baptist Churches. What are their beliefs in history? Compiled by Cooper P. Abrams III. All rights reserved. There's the website link. Quote, What is an independent fundamental Baptist church? The name independent fundamental Baptist church is usually used traditionally by churches which pattern themselves strictly after the example of the early church as found in the New Testament. Today the name Baptist is used by many churches that are not following the teachings of the New Testament. Uh, I hate to tell you this, the name Baptist is used by churches, all Baptist churches are not following the teachings of the New Testament. All of them. I'm not just talking about the liberal ones that are brought in the rock and roll music and the new versions that come from the Vatican. I'm talking about all independent fundamental Baptist church buildings are doing things that have no basis in Scripture. All of them. 
And if you want to go around shooting your mouth off saying that we follow the King James Bible, the Bible alone is our standard for all matters of faith and practice. And you're not doing things, or you're doing things rather, that don't have any basis in here, you're a liar. You are lying to people, and God's not going to put up with it. All right? I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but why do you think there's so much division among the independent fundamental Baptists? Why? I mean, if God's in that system, do you think God's splitting it every couple of years? Back to the article. Quote, Others have to a lesser degree compromised the word of God by their teachings, practices, and church polity by trying to conform to popular religious trends. Oh, but not the independent fundamental Baptists, right? You know, oh, they wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, they would. And yes, they have. These worldly churches still call themselves Baptists, but in fact they do not believe or practice what true Baptists have historically believed, and more importantly, what the Word of God says. The true independent fundamental Baptists have no association or fellowship with these churches because they teach or practice things contrary to the New Testament. <laughs> All IFB churches practice things which are contrary to the New Testament. All of them do. Every single one I've ever been to has done things that are just totally far into the pages of Scripture. Again, this is deception. Maybe it's deception through ignorance. I'll grant you that. I know a lot of the IFB guys, a lot of these pastors, they are parroting what they have been taught in their seminary. A lot of them have never actually sat down and considered what does the Bible actually teach? Are we lining up with the Bible? A lot of them have been that way. But as a Christian, you have to examine yourself in the light of Scripture. You do not have the freedom to just say, well, we always have done it that way, so we're just going to keep doing it that way, and we're going to say it's Bible doctrine. That's wrong. It's dead wrong. <clears throat> and of course I have here, modern IFB churches conform to the popular religious trends of their day way back in the early 1700s. We're going to see about that. We will see later that many of the early Baptists actually opposed the whole church building system. Well, we're going to see that. Back to the article, quote, True independent fundamental Baptist churches uphold the purest teachings of the early church as revealed in the New Testament. Again, this is an outright lie. IFB churches do not uphold the purest teachings of the early church. That is a, that's a, this, this whole thing of that you're holding to the teachings of the early church, that is a lie. I mean, that, that gets me irritated. Now look at this next admission here. Talk about an admission of guilt. Quote, this is from the article, okay? Again, this isn't me writing this. This is from the article. All right, by this Cooper Abrams, the third. Quote, When the Roman emperor declared Christianity the religion of Rome, he converted hordes of pagans that made up the empire. Now listen to this. Pagan temples became the meeting houses for, quote-unquote, Christians. Huh. Question. If the Roman Catholic Church transformed pagan temples into meeting houses for Christians then where did independent fundamental Baptists get their buildings from? The Bible? Uh, no, because there are no church buildings in the Bible. So if the Catholics took them from the pagans, where did the Baptists get them from? They got them from Catholicism, which took them from the pagans. You say, oh, I don't agree with this. Boy, you're going off. You're crazy. You're... you're you're really messed up. Okay, here's what you do. Open your King James Bible and get me some verses of Scripture that prove that Christians met in church buildings and the bad Bible believer will go away. Okay? And you can go back to worshiping in your church building and saying that it's God's house when it's not. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 15 says, that which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. When you have something that's wrong, when you have something that's pagan, you say it's sin, I'm not going to have anything to do with it. You don't say, we can Christianize it. And it's very ironic that you have a lot of these modern day independent fundamental Baptists, and they'll slam the modern church movement for contemporary Christian rock. 
or contemporary Christian rap or contemporary Christian heavy metal. And they say, that stuff's pagan, you can't Christianize it. Why don't we talk about your buildings, your pagan temples that, come, that the Catholics took and they Christianized and then you took it from Catholicism? Why don't we talk about that? You say, oh, come on, brother, it's not that bad. Oh, it's worse than you can imagine. And I, I have been, like I said, I found some stuff here. We're going to be covering it as we continue in this study. I found some things that are going to blow your mind and are going to show you that God's curse is upon these buildings. It isn't just that God looks down and says, well, you know, I don't really prefer that, but His curse is upon this stuff. It is so vile and so wicked when you actually realize what's going on with these church buildings. I mean, I've heard some of this stuff in the past, but I didn't really connect all the dots until I did this study, until my wife and I here, till we looked up these things and we did the research, and all of a sudden it, the realization comes what these buildings, what they are based on, and what they are showing, and it's just like, oh, wow. Very, very bad. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 20 says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Talking about those pagans back then. And not to God, and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Okay. little statement that you need to, to get into your mind here and you need to think about as we continue. This is by a man named Dr. Paul Glanville, a medical doctor, and I heard an interview of him and I wrote this quote of his down because it was so good. He said, quote, there is no way to do a wrong thing the right way, end quote. There is no way to do a wrong thing the right way. If there's something that God says that's sin, I don't care how much sanctification you have, I don't care how much prayer you do, I don't care whatever, how many good feelings you have about it, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Okay? You can't say the things that the Gentiles are sacrificing, they're sacrificing the devils, so I'm going to Christianize it. No. That cup of the devils there, the, the table of the devils, I'm going to make that Christian. You can't do that. God is not interested in being worshipped by the way of pagans. By paganism. God says that stuff is wicked, get rid of it. Get it out of your life. Oh, I know, but we can make it Christian. No, you can't. Now, let's go look at some pictures here in the study. Please notice this pagan Greek amphitheater. All right, look at the design of the thing. Okay, now look at that. You have down there where those little people are standing, that's the platform, the raised platform where the speaker stands, the orator, you know, the guy that does orations, kind of like you read about Herod in your Bible. But then you have the, the seats fanning up kind of in that, that it kind of goes up and, and around. Now notice these Baptist churches. There again you see it. You got the seats for the choir up behind the pastor there on the raised platform. You got the podium that he stands at. And then you have the seats in that same circular elevating way. It kind of goes up, circles around, and kind of goes up like that. It's the same thing. It's patterned after the Greek amphitheater. How about the First Baptist Church of Newport News, Virginia? Again, raised platform, pulpit, seats for the choir up behind, and the seats for the people, the congregation, goes out and raises up. How about Preston Wood Baptist Church, Plano, Texas? Same thing. Seats for the choir. And by the way, notice the big television screen there. Okay, I'm going to get ahead of myself here a little bit, but that big television screen one day is going to have the image of the Antichrist on it. The Bible says that the whole world is going to worship the image of the beast. You see, that's the real purpose. I'm really getting ahead of myself here, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it a while. That's the real purpose of building these church buildings. That was Satan's agenda. To get... Christians to build buildings just like the pagans so that one day the Antichrist can be worshipped in these places. You say, oh, now, come on, Brian. Think about it. They say, so where do you 
worship. What are they talking about? They're talking about a church building. And the Bible says in Revelation 13, chapter 13 there, that the whole world is going to worship the beast. Where do you worship? Church buildings. These pagan temples that they have something about them which is extremely wicked, which we're going to be covering here as we continue. But these pagan churches are going to have people worshiping the Antichrist. Because most of these big churches like this I'm sh that I'm showing you, they're filled with lost people. Most of the people in these places are lost. How about the Second Baptist Church of Houston, Texas? That thing just looks creepy. I'm sorry. I mean, that thing, look at that. All that white and black and all It just, yeesh. Big stained glass windows over there. That thing just looks creepy. But again, you see the raised platform. You see the seats for the choir up behind. Creepy. How about the, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but the Yonsei Central Baptist Church in Seoul, South Korea. Or Seoul, South Korea, whatever. There. Again, you see raised platform, circular seating that ascends upward. Okay? It's right there. And again, big television screens too. Got to have that. And you say, well now, Brother Brian, see, here I can prove you're wrong. Because you're showing apostate Baptist churches. Right? I mean, you haven't shown one independent fundamental Baptist yet. So we got you now. Really? How about uh, Jack Hiles, one of the leaders of the fundamental Baptist movement? Let's look at his church building. Oh. There we have it again. Raised platform and the seating in a circular area, just like the amphitheater, ascending upward. Hmm. And we're not done with that church building either. The First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana. Okay. But what about the exterior of the ancient pagan Greek buildings? Well, now I have a picture there of the Parthenon over in ancient Greece. And what do you have with the Parthenon? Well, you can see the very familiar Greek architecture. You have a slightly sloped roof on the front there, and you have six columns in the front of that thing. Slightly sloped roof and columns. I mean, again, we're dealing with facts here. Now let's take a look at the exterior of Jack Hiles Independent Fundamental Baptist Church Building. Well, looky there. Three different sections on the front of that church building patterned after the Greek Parthenon. Now, you explain that to me. Some of you brethren out there that are getting all upset right now, explain it to me. Of all the architectural styles that they could choose, why would they pattern their church building after a Greek pagan temple? You see, the Catholics, they came along and they took the pagan temples, according to our Baptist historian there, they came and took the pagan temples and Christianized them. Why is Jack Hiles doing the same thing? You say, well, then you're saying that Jack Hiles was part of some grand conspiracy or something, and secretly he was an Illuminati Satanist or something. I'm not saying that. I think he was just ignorant. I think a lot of these guys, they get so you know, stuck on themselves and on their ministry and they're just trying to win the souls as many as they can and build, so you can big the, build the biggest church building. And a lot of times they have no idea what they're doing. But you see, there's a spirit that goes along with the church building. There's a certain spirit there that looks down its nose on anybody who's not part of that building. See? And God can't bless that. You say, well, Brian, that's just the exterior of the building. You know, I mean, come on. Don't be ridiculous. Okay, why don't we take a little walk inside Jack Hiles' fabulous independent fundamental Baptist church. What would you look there? Right behind the pulpit, another Greek Parthenon. The same architecture. And over above the screens, television screens, you have this same thing. What in the world's going on here, people? Why pattern it after Greek pagan temples? Tell me. Explain it to me. I mean, hey, educate me. You know? Enlighten me. 
tell me why independent fundamental Baptists are patterning their church buildings after a Greek Parthenon, where false gods were set up. And by the way, if you look at the picture there, see all those little American flags and everything? It says there, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels speaks during the funeral service for Sergeant Brian Leonhart at First Baptist Church in Hammond, Indiana. Wednesday, January 18th of 2012, Leon Hart was one of four members of the Valparaiso-based Indiana National Guard 713th Engineer Company killed when their vehicle was struck by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan. Stephanie Dowell, Sun-Times Media. So he has the governor of the state speaking in his church building. What did we read earlier there about how that the Baptists uh, don't yoke themselves up with the secular government? Why is the governor of the state speaking in the church building? And you look at the other pictures, there's police and firefighters, military, they have, they even had their own little, you know, they're at the Jack Hiles Church, they even have their own little uh, soldier armor guard or something like this. 